Well, I've just spawned in. My boat's gone. I'm, I genuinely don't know where my boat is. Uh, but welcome on back to another episode of Broom Build. We're going to be here uh, for like two seconds. I wanted to show you the final build that we did last episode. I finally got it finished. I got some of the final resources and it's looking a pretty good. So this is our coral farm and music. You're too loud. Get out. So this is the final build and I really dig how it came out on the side here. I decided to put some pipes that are kind of like piping out the water. And then in the back, I put some other pipes that are kind of pumping in the water. And I think the back, I really wasn't sure what to do. And I think this really helps. Like it doesn't have to be anything too crazy. It just makes it so it's like adds a little bit of a story to it, but makes it pretty cool. What just happened? You I like you saw me load in. You I we wandered around. What? Genuinely. I don't I I don't know what happened. Wow. Okay. Very strange. But uh so the build is done. This side is uh nothing special. There's nothing going on over here. But yes, here this is. I was gonna go and uh get scaffolding. Now if we can get all of it or at least most of it uh, it seems like we lost two that's fine don't care um so that's what the back looks like and we're moving on if there's anything weird with the video settings and stuff i'm sorry uh i'm experimenting with playing in windowed mode and just simply capturing the window instead of a full screen because i get kind of like screen sick if it's a full screen i'm not really sure why but just experimenting here. I'm going to do something that might be a little controversial, but it's because I just think it's it's necessary. Yes, I'm taking my stuff back. So the primary reason why I'm doing that is just simply because we already have diamonds. We have an enchanting station and the stuff that I want to do, I'm going to wear this just simply for the purpose of transporting it back, but I'm not actually going to probably wear it. I don't honestly wear armor that often anyways. Um, so I probably won't actually be wearing this. I'll wear the boots and that's about it. But I've decided to do that because we have a lot of building to do today, quite frankly, and uh, I'm very excited for it, but it's going to require us to have a lot of materials and my tools just aren't going to cut it to gather that. And so we already have this, these tools and stuff. It's been long enough. I think it's perfectly fine to go ahead and take it. Uh, we're going to take like just all of this because it potentially, I don't know if the dripstone is going to be used in the build, but I just, I need it. I need it all. This won't be used. Do we have any terracotta? All right. That seems good. We don't have still enough resources, but that's a good start. Good. Right. Okay, got a lot of resources from this area. And I, you know, the reason why we're just going ahead grabbing things and stuff is because I like I ain't got the time, man. I, I don't want to have to deal with trying to get our tools and resources and stuff using a pickaxe that's basically dead, that we don't have mending. There's no villager over in the Norn area. Just simply put, I don't got the time. And I don't think y'all want me to not make a video because I am having to grind resources just simply to get the tools to grind resources. That just seems silly if we already have it in this world. I've already played a good amount of time over in the Norn area. We're set up and we could easily get diamond stuff if we had simply a mob grinder, which we don't have over there. So that's just kind of why it's more. Maybe it's a laziness aspect. Maybe it's just smart. Don't know. One of the things we are going to need a lot of is actually a uh, black dye. We definitely need this just because we're going to be using concrete, which it's not something we often use. 
Well, that's not bad. A full stack of ink sacs just simply from deciding to stop off and kill a few squids. Not bad. Why do I always choose to build so far away from where I was? Ugh. Finally, we are back in the Norn area. Goodness me, it's such a long ways away. But what we're building today is not a long way away, thank goodness. Now, first things first, I need some chests. Eight chests should do. We're just going to go mark out where we're going to be building today. Now, I'm not going to be continuing doing some of this honey cove metery stuff. Not really in the mood for it. I've got a really fun I oops. Oops, okay, we're going down here. Now I've got a really fun idea for this build now, and I just need to see if the area I'm thinking will work or not for it. Uh, primarily because I, I don't know how deep uh, the water and stuff is around here. And so that's something I just need to check out. All right, after some planning. I was initially going to build over that direction. So the Honey Cove Meadery is right over there, uh, which you can maybe you can see the smoke just barely. Um, Honey Cove Meadery is right over there. This is that abandoned nether portal that is uh, right over here. This is how big, uh, how, how large in terms of width the build is going to be. And um, uh, it's going to be a little bit. I think this area is going to look really work really well for this. Um, what's really nice is there's tons of gravel here and tons of sand and we need a lot of concrete. So I'm probably going to be airing this land out and uh, building it back up with just maybe something. Uh, I don't need it to be anything fancy. We'll work out the details of the landscape later on or I'll do it off camera or something. I think it'll be good. First thing that's got to go is this guy. Um, but prior to any sort of building, I need to do some resource gathering. So what we need to do is we need to get tons of terracotta. We need to get tons of deep slate and tough. We need to get tons of gravel and sand for, uh, and I need to get these growing, uh, gravel and sand for concrete and anything else. Copper. We need lots and lots of copper. So. I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. We're going to get some planting going on this, and I'm going to actually go grab the beacon from underneath our Cycladic village. And uh, we're going to start there and just start mining away. A little bit of work later, we have a wireframe for what we're going to be building. So looks a little strange, I'm sure. You're probably thinking, what's the gourd? What's with the gourd? What's with the towers? What's with the circle? Uh, so it is a it's a moderately decent sized build, but it's going to be entirely like fully hollow. There's not going to be a lot on the inside. So it's really not actually that big. Um, and none of this space is going to be lit up, but it's not going to be used. So I'm not going to even worry about making it look good on the inside there. Uh, it's going to be really pretty basic. Oh, hello. Who do what do you have? Really quite unfortunate when they show up and don't have anything to offer except their souls. So prior to getting into any of this actual build here, what I'd like to do is uh, fill out this landscape, get it so it is not stone. Uh, we're going to be just making it all grass. Probably going to stop. Not going to do all of this. Probably where this gravel is, is where I'm going to kind of call it and uh, we'll transition it a little later on, but it doesn't all need to be grass. But I want this area at least to be grass. Um, and then it's going to be obviously we need to bring up any of this stuff that's too far down so it's not floating. And um, we may just kind of bring it up around this way and then right up along here. This is going to be like right on the edge of a cliff, so we don't have to do too much and we'll just kind of transition sand or something right here. I think that'll be good. Um, and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get on into that, get that figured out. And because uh, we don't have replay mod currently, because we're we are technically in 119 and uh, we're going to do more 119 stuff next episode. Um, but that's what it's all about. Uh, this this whole build is leading up to that. And so I just want to get this done. OK, after much 
work. I have the landscape figured out. I am loving what we've got going here. I really, really dig it. I tried to tie in this birch forest a bit. I wanted azalea trees just because I like the azalea tree leaves a lot. So I tried to tie in the birch by kind of making it fade into this area. I think it looks so good. So we've got some little ponds and I, I really dig this. I've been making these little flower arches in a sense. Um, so you come down the pathway and you got these little flowers. And I'm thinking I may hang some glow berries on these occasionally. So we've got a pathway here made out of tough uh, cobbled deep slate, regular deep slate, and then uh, this block. But as I said, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use a lot of cobbled deep slate here. And uh, I'm also going to be using a lot of deep slate tiles. And so one of the biggest pains about getting cobbled deep slate is, or not even cobbled deep slate, but getting like the deep slate tiles is in general Minecraft, you have access to bricks and things. Uh, stone bricks and all that via the stone cutter with regular stone, which makes sense to me. Uh, cobbled deep slate or well, deep slate itself. These things you only have access by using cobbled deep slate, which just makes zero sense to me. So something I did was I added a recipe to change deep slate in the stone cutter specifically. So I can't do it in a crafting bench um, into just cobbled deep slate. just Quick conversion. It doesn't to me. It doesn't really matter because I also have made. You may notice some of my tools are a little bit healthier. I went and we have a skeleton farm over yonder in the Norn area, and I just went and made a very very simple quick farm to get healing on my my all my tools and stuff. And uh, so then I also got a lot of deep slate down there, and I just think this is just better. Um, I, I don't think it's necessary to have to work so atrociously hard in order to get like, I know I'm saying I like it's being I'm being dramatic by calling it atrociously, but you know what I mean? It's like it's just not fun to like go and mine a ton of stuff with my silk touch pickaxe. And then suddenly I have to break every single block again just because I can't make all of the deep slate stuff just from regular old deep slate. Makes no sense to me. So hopefully uh, y'all are OK with that. Now, truly, I don't know what we're going to do for this wall. Um, essentially, what's going to happen, this is the only wall that's going to be a little strange because there has to be deep slate here. And I don't have any other. There's some portions, I guess, that do have this kind of lineup uh, with flat against it. But for the most part, you've got depth, and I think that is perfectly fine. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do this. Let me play around with some of the textures. I want to use deep slate just because I want a really solid looking base. Um, and it's also kind of like great. We're going to gradient up uh, to the top of the build. And so this is a really nice dark base. So let me play around with some texturing and then I'll come back in once the bottom base area is done. All right, so I did a little bit more than just the walls, as you can tell. Uh, the two towers, they're a little interesting. You may be kind of not sure what in the world they are. Essentially, they're kind of like little pistons type things, like not 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 like I like Minecraft pistons. Uh, they are more like this would shoot down and can create like air pressure is kind of the idea. So it's like shoots down, funnels the air into this area here. Uh, and now this is what we're going to be focusing on now. One of the blocks that I needed for this build was Dark Prismarine and Sea Lanterns. I had forgot that I decided to uh, do it. I've changed the build just slightly uh, from my creative world, but um, I was originally going to have this entire walkway be out of Dark Prismarine. I don't think that's going to work because we need some dark prismarine for the actual body of this as well. So what we're going to have to do is figure out a walk something for the walkway here. I'm thinking we'll just probably utilize this block since it's already at this height and we'll just go ahead and make that uh, these interior walls not going to be necessary. So not really sure why I went and laid out in, in Acacia. Maybe we'll figure out something for it. We'll figure it out as time goes, but um, 
Right now, I want to start building this base structure here. We need to build out, I think we're going to build out up until this point, the acacia point. Uh, I may do the acacia lines as well, because then I want to show you what is going to go in the center line uh, in between the two acacia logs. So let me go ahead and get this built out, uh, and then I'll be back. This is probably the worst thing in Minecraft right here. Oh, I hate making concrete powder into regular concrete. Short little building trick right as we get into this. So I've got the bottom layer done and uh, there's a lot of this kind of diagonal overhang area. And it's really annoying sometimes when you need to place directional blocks, but you don't want to have to like place the block that you're going to place, but you don't want to use tool durability also in like placing blocks and then having to break them. Just use scaffolding. It's way easier. You don't have to really plan it out too hard. You just kind of put it where you think it needs to go. And then bada bing, bada boom, you've got little directional areas and then you don't have to use a tool to break it. It just simply makes life a whole lot easier. It's not even difficult. And boom, look at that. We're done. We can just go through. We can slap these and we're good. That's what it's going to look like more or less. Uh, there's going to be a door that we do down here that will make it more apparent that it's actually the entrance there. Um, but once that all turns green, it stands out nice and fine. I really like also using the, the uh, lightning rod as a wait. Uh, I like using the lightning rod as like a little design thing, especially if you can make something too tall. This one, it didn't work out to do too tall gaps, but you can alternate them like we did uh, in the coral farm. And you can alternate them so that it looks like there's two like thick attachment points at the top and bottom. And it's actually it looks really, really good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish this build out. There's a little bit more uh, to do on this top section obviously needs built out. But then there's a little bit up here also to do. Uh, and then we'll get into the, like the final reveal. So why don't we actually why don't we finish this build out and then we will I'm going to show you a little something, something that's got to do with what we're going to be doing in the future and why we built this. Oh, what a glorious sunrise that is. Man, I am glad to have shaders back installed. Uh, so we're done. I finished it. Look at it. Isn't it glorious? Oh, it's beautiful. That's right. We made a cannon. And more specifically, we made an air cannon. That's what those little guys are. They, you may have been wondering, what in the world is it? Air cannon. These guys are like pistons that like shoot down super fast, fill this contraption with air and... Out we go and we get shot into the sky and it's just really awesome. And I'm, I just, oh, it's so good. It's so, so good. Now I'm going to be real with you guys. This build turned out different than I initially was planning. Initially, I had been testing this build out in my creative test world, jumping back and forth between creative and survival, making sure this thing worked in survival and it was working 
beautifully. I had zero issues, absolutely zero issues. I probably tested this thing 30, 40 times. And uh, yeah, so uh, it was working beautifully. So I saved the redstone uh, for the uh, inside here, which uh, we can take a look-see at. What was, it? oh, I was stepping on this. Metal, it confused the snot out of me. So uh, for one, here's what the kind of sides look like. I just made this little platform. It's it's nothing crazy. It's lit up and stuff. It's nice. Uh, so made this uh, little cannon here. Um, and uh, first try, tested it. I died. Yeah. So I was really confused about this. Uh, I genuinely had no idea what was going on. I had tested it so many times and I knew that it worked. For some reason, my testing had failed and I could not for the life of me figure out why until I realized my creative world is in peaceful mode. This world is in hard mode. I swapped my creative world over to hard mode and or easy and or normal. Uh, instantly died. <laughs> so the only options I had to make this thing work. So here, here's the thing. Here's the kind of the kerfuffle that was going on. I built this all and then I added the redstone. And so this entire build was going to become moot and absolutely worthless. No reason to it. I was going to have to do something to it that I was just not wanting to do. Uh, and that was like add a water system or something to make it look like I could get shot out. But it was just like following a bubble stream. That sounded so dumb. I did not like that idea. So I did something we did in the last season of Broom Build. I added command blocks and I tried my best to make this uh, not creative. And uh, I was unable to do that. Man, I'm washed out in the sun. Man, I am a pasty boy. So in all in uh, honest, honestly, I, I tried so many things to try and get this to work uh, properly. And the thing that there, the issue that I ran into is every single time I try. So I tried giving myself resistance uh, to just make it so I didn't take damage from the, the duration of the explosion. I tried to give myself extra hearts with absorption. Um, and so this is all using command and stuff. And so I was trying to figure out how can I make it so that I can use this cannon and not like deal with going back and forth between survival and creative. So the primary issue is survival mode. If you take damage from TNT, even if you're able to survive it, um, no matter how much of it is, you absorb some of the actual knockback and you actually don't go as far as you do in peaceful slash creative mode. I did not know this. And so no matter how, it was either double or triple the amount of TNT we're using, which would be an absurd amount of TNT, or just simply switch to creative mode very briefly and then automatically switch back to survival mode just for the instance of using this cannon. So that's what I opted for. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly what that's like, uh, so that oh, I need my steak, God dang private. Uh, so I'm going to show you what that's like, because I wanted to make sure that this was as survival focused as possible. And so this is purely, purely, purely because I want this build to work because this is like the main way I was hoping to be able to get back and forth between what we're going to be building in the sky. So all that said and done, the way we get through here is so we've got this interior here. So if we don't want to activate the whole TNT system and stuff, there's no way to activate this unless I actually go through that door. It's all wired through a, a pressure plate down at that door. That is the only way that we can use this. And so it has to go through and I've made it very automatic. So here, let's let, let's just see. So firstly, but because it's dealing with creative mode, I will always this is why this is here. I will always drop my stuff off. So I have no issues with like potentially deleting my stuff. So essentially you push this button, run over this trap door thingy or thing. This switches to creative mode, drops the TNT. We aim up, we get shot up and we're in survival mode again. But we made it up here and that is exactly how it works. And because this is so high up, uh, it snows up here. And that's why there's so many torches and stuff and hanging lanterns. Um, but that's that's the gist. That's how we get up here. Uh, only problem is I have not really thought of a way to get down exactly. Um, so if I take my stuff back, 
So truly the only way down is if we go off this edge and we just leap of faith and we'll be able to make it all the way down here. And look how far that sends you. Isn't that cool? It's kind of cool you can see the island when you're underwater. Um, but that is how we uh, get up top. That is the whole build. That's what I initially envisioned. Uh, of course, I tested this in uh, my test world, trying to make it. I genuinely thought this was survival friendly. I don't know why I thought that water dampened the explosion damage. For some reason, I thought it doesn't blow up blocks, so it won't blow up me. And You know, that just doesn't make that much sense, does it? So there's that. But that is uh, that's what we're doing. So if we take it one more time, you can get a good look. Creative mode drops it. You jump on, we go up and we get shot up into the sky. Woo. And so it's it's consistently getting me up here. It's not consistently sending me to the exact same height. Uh, so sometimes you hit the side of the cannon, which makes it so that you land more like what we just did. Sometimes you don't hit anything and you get launched even further up. But we are sitting at Y level 295. So we've got 25 blocks of space up here to build upwards. Um, and so we're not going to do any more building today because boy, howdy, have I done a lot of building. All right, y'all. So this is actually I'm a, I'm a couple days uh, past kind of in the editing process a day before this should be releasing or maybe two days before. I'm not really sure. Um, I've been playing around with just trying to really experiment on if this can work in a non creative fashion. And I think I found a workaround that could work, but I want to I, I, I want to ask you guys what you like. Also, if the mic sounds different, I got a new boom arm and it's much better, much closer to my mouth. I'm also adjusting the volume and stuff as well and equalizing a lot better, I think. So hopefully this sounds a little bit better because it's right next to my face instead of like a foot away. But any hoozle, I've been playing around and I think I have a solution that could be survi very survival friendly. It deals with effects that I just didn't even comprehend for some reason, didn't even think about. Um, so before I had been, I had said like I played around with absorption and resistance. And I actually played around with trying out multiple different things to see if I can make it work. One I thought was kind of funny was I tried adding dolphins grace and resistance and I was hoping I'd be able to like shoot out of the water really quick and that uh, that didn't work at all. One of the things I forgot about was there's jump boost and usually you get like jump boost two, which makes it so you can jump just two blocks. And so that that block, that number can go up to uh, massive numbers and you can get some pretty big jump boost going. But played around with that and I want I want your feedback. Is this a good idea or do you prefer the actual explosion doing the job? So essentially what's going to happen is we're going to go through the same process, but instead of creative mode switching back and forth, um, we simply get resistance and jump boost and we don't wait for the explosion to go off. We kind of just get here. We stand and woo, we jump <laughs> and I've got it to eight uh, jump boost 85. Uh, and then it clears the effects as well. They only last 15 seconds regardless, even if that doesn't work. Um, but that is another way. So the TNT still goes, but it's not actually the thing that's causing us to go up, if that makes sense. So that is a survival way of doing it. Now, I know I say survival in the sense that it's like it's not switching to creative mode. That's like the primary thing. So let me know what you prefer in the method of how we get up here using the TNT in creative mode and actually getting flung by the power of the TNT or using a potion effect concept where it's kind of just faking it, but we're still following the TNT explosion, if that makes sense. I don't know. But y'all, that is going to have to do it for this episode because uh, I've done a lot of building, done a lot of building. This Sky Island wasn't even in the original plan, wasn't actually going to even build this, was just going to do the cannon. But I wanted to have kind of a proof of concept for y'all. And uh, not all the islands, of course, are going to have water at the bottom. That'd be silly. This is probably the only one. And I'm going to add some trees and stuff around. And I want to make a few extra islands dotted around that are just really small floating tree rock island things um, just for decoration purposes. Um, so, yeah, 
let me know about that, uh, the concept of how to get up here, because I really want to know. And I hope you guys are excited for this. We are going to be building off in what direction are we facing? Is this the, the back of the cannon? So we're going to be just going that way. So we're actually going to be making our way over to kind of this jungly area because I really want to use the lushness of the jungle. Uh, and then there's a nice kind of like um, warm ocean biome over that way. And the water is going to look really nice, I think, in just vanilla without shaders. So that's kind of where we're going to be going. Uh, we're going to be taking our way over that way and starting to build up what we are going to be building, which is uh, really exciting. I hope you guys are excited because, man, look at this view. Isn't this cool? I'm excited. I really hope you guys are as well. And we're going to try to uh, just end it here by jumping off the island. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Uh, bye bye. My gosh, this is scary.